Sonic has been around a long time, since his debut in 1991. Through countless game spin-offs, TV shows, and movies, we've all come to know him pretty well. There is a person object note on who has always been Sonic's biggest fan. But sadly, he can't even run fast, let alone look as cool as Sonic or perform any of his other abilities. So we are going to go on a journey to help him embody his childhood hero. In the Making Sonic series, I'll be adding new features to our Sonic person until he's able to finally live out his dreams. Right now, he is slow and pale as a sheet. Poor guy. In this first video, we're gonna do two things. We'll get him on his way to looking the part, and we'll make it so that he can run fast with graduated acceleration. So let's get started. We're starting off as we often do with our basic personodon, a camera attached to it with the left stick controlling the person and the right stick controlling the camera with a small Z offset. The first thing we're gonna do is add in those signature blue spikes. We're gonna start that by adding in a box object and attaching it to the person. Then we're gonna add in a texture. The texture is what we'll use to create the actual visuals of the spikes or spines. You'll attach that to the object node on, and you'll turn off all the settings except for movable. We're gonna change the connection point to center Y positive, so that the box overlaps with the top of the person's head. Then we'll go into our texture and select the texture face X center. So that's the center line between the directions left and right. Then you can go ahead and start drawing out the spines or spikes or any other add-on you want to a person's head. And when you hit play to test it, it's in the right spot, but it's really hard to nail down a texture for this since the person's head moves independently. So things are gonna look really weird if it's not lined up perfectly. And when they jump, their head moves back a lot. So it's really hard to get a good design. One thing you can do is create these basic guidelines and then walk around and perform the actions you intend the player to perform. That way you can see where it generally lines up. I have my own version that I had worked on for a very long time, and I think it looks mostly good. Though it's not perfect, I'm pretty happy with how this looks, and once we get him turned blue, I think it'll mesh even better. So the easiest thing we're gonna do in this whole series is go into the person settings and change him to blue. So he's looking a lot better, and his spikes look natural now. The next thing we have to do is make it so he can actually run fast. If you want it to be an overachiever, you can also go ahead and try and add those back spikes and tail. I might do that in a future video, but I also don't want to bog our person object down with too many extra visual element boxes since that can affect the physics over time and we're already going to be doing a lot of funny physics things. The way that we're going to apply additional forces like extra speed to our person object is by attaching a moving object. This moving object, the size doesn't really matter, we're going to make it small, and we're going to make it so that it's visible and non-solid and non-destructive. The connection point is going to be center-center so that it's in the middle of our character. The mode can be acceleration or speed, and I'll explain a little bit more about which one later, but we'll stick with acceleration for now. And then our frame of reference is going to be local, since we want the direction we move in based on the direction of the character. This clip isn't the best example, but generally, Sonic doesn't immediately take off at top speed. He'll gradually accelerate to top speed based on how long he's moving in the same direction or remaining in motion. So that's what we're gonna try to replicate here. The first thing we need to do is identify a state, whether Sonic is moving or not moving. So we're gonna get an equals comparison node on and we're gonna attach both of the left movement stick outputs into the first input on the comparison. Then we'll get a constant node on set to zero and send that into input number two. Now we have a signal of whether the Sonic person is moving or not. We'll add a counter, since the counter is what we're going to use to determine how long he's been moving for. We'll grab a not node on. Now we have a clean output, both for when he's moving and when he's not. When the signal is not zero, which means he's moving, we want to count up on the counter. The counter will be set to a range from zero to 180, so it'll take three seconds to reach top acceleration. When it is zero, we want to reset the counter. So we'll send the equal comparison output to the reset input on the counter. Then we need a map node on so that we can process the counter's output. Input range will be between 0 and 180, since that's what the counter is counting. And our output range will be the amount of speed that we want to add to our sonic person. In this case, it's 0 to 25. I want to add 25 units of speed or acceleration to our moving object. The map nodon is just scaling the output so that it makes sense. But you can manipulate these two nodon, the counter and the map, to change how much speed you want to add to the sonic person and how long it takes to reach top speed. Then we're going to take a multiplication nodon and multiply the map output by the not signal. Remember, the not signal 
means that Sonic is running. So if he is running, then we apply this much extra force. We'll take the output of the multiplication node on and put it into an inversion node on before it goes into the moving object, since Z negative is forward on that moving object and we wanna move Sonic forward. Next, we're gonna add a number object and attach it to the player's head. We'll input what comes out of the inversion node on as a debugging tool so that we can see visually in the world while we're playing if our map and counter node on system is working right. So you can see it's slowly counting up to 25. It reaches negative 25 at the three second mark. And that's when Sonic Person reaches their maximum acceleration. And a quick note on the difference in movement modes in the moving object between acceleration and speed. Acceleration continues to add force while speed is a static force. So you can just play around with the two options and see which one better fits your game. So we'll just clean this up and get rid of our number object debugging tool. We can put it all neatly inside of a comment node on so that we can keep track of it and reference it later, since we're probably gonna be adding a lot to this build over time. In the next few videos, we'll probably add the spin dash, the spin jump, and I'll even have to figure out a way to do a homing attack. The game ID is in the description and pinned comment. Maybe you can follow along and add in your own features or create your own levels with it. And I'll see you in the next one.